Hello Nidorinars and Nidorinos, I'm King Nidor and today we're coming here from Vilestone City where it is the 4th placed Vilestone Breakers going head to head with the 2nd placed Lava Rouge Flare and if the Breakers can get their 5th victory in a row they should be able to jump over the Lava Rouge Flare but they do not want that because the Flare want that top spot so with that said let us know in the comments below who you think is going to win this matchup will it be the fighting types, will it be the fire types, let's go! Three. That is right, so much riding on this match between these two sides as the Flare are starting out with Blaziken and Slitherwing. It is going to be Gardevoir and Infernape starting out for the Vilestone Breakers and how fitting that we have two Fire Fighting types and two Terrastal Draftees to start off this matchup as they go head to head. A battle between two current Elite Four sides and they want to kick off round 9 with a massive victory. So with that said, let us know who you think can take this matchup as Slytherin has just taken on its Terrastal form and Gardevoir is taking on its form now and they have both embraced their new type in this side. But I cannot wait to see Blaziken and Inferno go head to head. These two sides could actually meet again in victory road, but they are meeting right now as Inferno immediately goes with the Mud Shot, which is going to be super effective on that recently fire type turned Slytherin also lowering its speed in the process and Gardevoir follows it up with the Psycho Cut, so Slytherin already taking a lot of damage, but Blaziken does go for the ally switch, trading places with Slytherin on the field, and Slytherin does follow it up with the Outrage, going for Inferno, getting some massive damage there, but Inferno does respond with the Sweet Scent, it is going to put that Sweet Scent over the field to lower that evasiveness of the two fire types on the field, a great deal, but Blaziken is going to respond with the Swift connecting with both fighting types, and Bla uh, Inferno has taken a lot of damage already as Gardevoir goes for the Rock Blast on to Blaziken. Now I've got to think if it went for Slytherin it might have been able to capitalize and potentially finish it off here but instead it has got four connections onto Blaziken and it gets that fifth connection as well. Fantastic play there by Gardevoir but that outrage continues and this will connect with Gardevoir putting it into knockout range because Gardevoir is no longer a part fairy type but Slytherin has become confused due to the fatigue in Inferno looking at capitalize goes with the conversion to focus in the end onto Blaziken and Inferno has just become a steel type and Blaziken could capitalize goes for the thunderclap though and unfortunately that does fail and this opens the door for Gardevoir to potentially capitalize as it goes for the topsy-turvy onto Slytherin so it is gonna switch all of their stat changes but Slytherin needs to shake off this confusion here so it doesn't do damage to itself and it is successful setting up the sunny day a very clever play because as that sunlight turns harsh it is going to activate that proto synthesis for Slytherin and boost that 135 base attack and it is going to be going first as well allowing it to go with the Dragon Breath, shaking off that confusion. Inferno is able to, able to hold on after that not very effective move and is going to respond with the Poison Jab onto Blaziken. Blaziken's been put into knockout range but it's also been left with that Poison status condition. Everybody has taken a lot of damage so far as Gardevoir with the Dazzling Gleam connects with both fire types. It's not very effective on the Slytherin but it eliminates Blaziken from this matchup and out in its place does come Cinderace here. As Slytherin has finally snapped out of that confusion, allowing it to go for the Fairy Lock, making it so no one can run away during the next turn, but no one's looking to run away from this match at all. They will be here till the end, and I hope you are too, as Cinderace with the Hex on to Gardevoir. Gardevoir is able to hang on, though, and Inferno follows it up with the Swallow, but that is going to fail because it hasn't gone for a stockpile. Gardevoir needs to do its bit, immediately going for the Sacred Sword, getting that Fighting-type boost, and takes out Slytherin with that critical hit to ensure it gets the elimination as well. That's already two down for the flare, but they are not out because the two fighting types are easy targets as out comes Silver Village for the flare and Cinderace goes with the blaze kick to immediately eliminate Gardevoir from this matchup. That is the response that the Lava Rouge flare needed because they couldn't could not let the Vilestone Breakers run away with it here, but Inferno is going to respond with the Blood Moon, but it goes for Serilege, who is immune to that being part ghost type, and it responds with the Razor Shell to complete the huge play, and a perfect play as well, because it has just leveled the playing field at four apiece, as out comes the Sidua, with that scrappy ability as well, being in its Sisuian form, and that Protosynthesis for Great Tusk has been activated, so now its physical attack has been heightened, and it's got that base 131 attack, but the cross chop from Cinderace gets some great damage there. On to the Sidua, Great Tusk is going to respond with the Mac Punch, but it goes for Serilege, who again is immune to normal and fighting type moves. The heal bell from Serilege 
will get that battle to charm, but it will fail because there is no status condition on Cinderace. And we get the expanding force from Decidueye on a Serilage. Gets in some okay damage there as that harsh sunlight does fade. And with that, it will return that physical attack of Great Tusk back to normal as it is on the receiving end of a Lust Approach. That super effective hit from Cinderace. Great Tusk is going to respond though with the tri attack going for Cinderace. This is going to connect because Cinderace is only fire type, but it's also been left paralyzed, so it may be unable to move, and it has been slowed down. Serilage is going to go for the Syrup Bomb, and this is going to slow down Decidueye. It's not very effective, but it does get that critical hit just to get that little bit of extra damage as the Decidueye is covered in that Sticky Candy Syrup. It responds with the Prismatic Laser on to Cinderace. Gets in some great damage there, but there is that speed being lowered for Decidueye here on the field as Great Tusk goes for the round, and yet again they've gone for Serilage, who is immune to that, which allows Serilage to go with the Heat Crash coming down on that Scrappy Decidueye to get the elimination with that super effective move, putting the leverage Flare in front for the first time in this matchup as well, but Cinderace is unable to move due to the paralysis, and that is crucial as out comes Quackwavel for the Vilestone Breakers, and Great Tusk is going to go for the Vault Tackle on to Cinderace to get the elimination in return, leveling the playing field yet again. And there is going to be that recoil damage there for Great Tusk as Quackwavel looks to follow it up, goes with the Smackdown, laying the Smackdown with that super effective move on to Serilage, who is going to respond with the stored power on to Quackwavel, super effective, but it doesn't get in that much damage as out comes Typhlosion in its Jotonian form, immediately taking speed control, goes for the Shell side on. On to Great Tusk. Great Tusk is able to hold on after that not very effective move, and it is going to respond with the Judgment. And it brings that Judgment down onto Typhlosion, and Quackwavel does follow it up with the reversal, but it goes for Serilage. That Ghost typing has come in critical for the Love Rouge Flare, who responds with the Flamethrower onto Quackwavel. Not very effective there on the part water type, but it's left it with that burn, which is going to cut into it, that base 120 physical attack, but also do that passive damage as we see happening down on the field right now. And Typhlosion looks to follow it up with the Shadow Punch. They're focusing in here on Quacko Hole, but they could have gotten the easy elimination of Great Tusk. This allows Great Tusk to respond with the Seed Bomb, but Serilage is able to hold on after that. Not very effective move, and it responds with the Liquidation. They're continuing to go for Quacko Hole with these not very effective moves. Who does go for the Sweet? Sent. It doesn't go on the e offensive and get the easy elimination of Serilage. Instead, it lowers that evasiveness yet again of the fire types on the field as that burn does put Quackwavel into knockout range. Typhlosion could capitalize here. Just needs to go on the offense. Goes with the tail stop. It gets the first connection onto Quackwavel and it gets the second connection to get the elimination. The leverage flare are back in front again. The Boston Brokers are down to the last two Pokemon. Serilage needs to go on the offensive here. But Great Tusk does have a quicker move set going for the Zap Cannon on the Typhlosion, which means Serilage could capitalize as Typhlosion has been left paralyzed as well. Similar to Cinderace, it is going to be slowed down. Serilage goes with the Stuff Cheeks. It's going to boost its defense, but it doesn't have much health to work with, so it's not really relevant. It should have gone for the easy elimination. And it is going to be a Nihilip coming out for the Vastum Breakers, immediately going with the Accelerock to take out Serilage with that super effective move, leveling the playing field is a two versus two matchup. Great Tusk follows it up with the Luster Purge onto Typhlosion. Typhlosion needs to hold on and that it can. This will open the door for it to be able to respond as it has its special defense level, but it's unable to move due to its paralysis. That could be crucial as we are about to find out the last Pokemon for the Flare and it is Arcanine in its Historian form. With that Intimidate ability, it is going to cut into the physical attack of Annihilate, but with that Defiant ability, it actually gets a really big attack boost does level the physical attack of Great Tusk as well, but the Flying Press from Annihilate super, oh, sorry, does massive damage to Arcanine, putting it in knockout range. And Great Tusk is able to avoid the Bleak Wind Storm, which is super effective, onto Annihilate, getting the critical hit as well. But Great Tusk, who's still in this matchup, goes for the block. It doesn't go for the easy elimination of Arcanine. They're making it so Arcanine can no longer escape, but it's not looking to go anywhere. As Typhlosion with the home cause, they need to get Great Tusk off this field. This is anybody's game as Arcanine is going to go and set up the Misty Terrain, which is going to weaken those Dragon-type moves. But this doesn't really favor either side. They just need to go on the offense at this late stage of the game, as Annihilate is going to go for the Prismatic Laser onto Typhlosion. And Typhlosion is eliminated. The Vastone Breakers have just taken the lead. Arcanine is all by itself. And Great Tusk follows it up with the Rock Smash. 
which is super effective and it does get the elimination to complete the huge play and get the victory for the Milestone Breakers in this back and forth match between these two top four sides and with that victory the vast and breakers have actually jumped the flare in the second place and next round they will be going on to face the spike meth rockets as they look to win their sixth game in a row whereas for the flare next round they will be going up against the hammerlock dragon it's been until then nittery knows nittery knows thank you so much for watching let us know in the comments below who you thought was the best on field and if you enjoyed what you saw please leave a like share subscribe but more importantly always remember you are awesome and i'll see you when you see me